Hey there, it's Liz from Lilac Renegade, and I'm doing three mini watercolor paintings today that tie loosely into what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Today I want to talk about illuminated manuscripts. This was a practice that was mainly done in Europe, and it is a long and cultivated tradition that happened all through the Middle Ages. There are some Islamic examples as well. Mainly monks working in scriptorium would be the ones who would uh, use vellum, which was made from hides, to create leaves of leaves which were pages of different manuscripts. And they mixed their own inks and they used adhesive to apply gold or silver leaf. More often you're going to see gold leaf. And it was all written and illustrated by hand. So these handwritten books were elaborately decorated with silver and gold and bright colors. And they're very famous for something called Celtic interlace. Many examples of what people know of as Celtic knots are actually examples of Celtic interlace. And something that I really find very wonderful about it is that it's very geometric and organic. There are elements of nature like animals in it and this is definitely a practice that I want to learn more about because not only is it so organic and it really flows but it is also very precise. Now the reason that books were so important was that they made it easier for ideas to move. And the reason the illustrations were so important was because many people were not literate. And so these illustrations would help provide context and help get a message across. Books were also considered very sacred, and they were very expensive to make besides the fact that there was gold leaf and it was decorated by hand and all of that. A lot of times the covers were covered with leather and gems and things like that, and the inks themselves could be very expensive to make with minerals that were brought in from all over the world. Some very famous examples are the Codex Gigas and the Book of Kells. And these are two of my favorites. The Codex Gigas is also called the Devil's Bible, and it was created in the 13th century by a monk called Herman the Recluse. It is absolutely huge and actually has a length of 36 inches. It is also the largest example of an illuminated manuscript and is famous because it has a full-page portrait of the devil in it. The legend behind this book was that the monk who created it was sentenced to be walled up alive for breaking his vows as a monk. To avoid punishment, he promised to write a book that would bring glory to the monastery in one night. And around midnight, he realized that he made a mistake and made a deal with the devil. And that's why the devil actually appears in it. 
The calligraphy alone, though, would have taken 20 years, so this is not a very likely explanation for its origin. The Book of Kells is possibly the most famous example of an illuminated manuscript and actually had a movie made about it. It is an excellent animated movie and I highly recommend it to everyone of all ages. The book itself was created around 800 in the Common Era and was stored in the Abbey of Kells for years. The Abbey of Kells was actually a re-establishment of a monastic order based out of Iona. And it was possibly created by a saint named Columba. Now, the problem with that is that the time periods do not really match up very well. Columba died sometime in the 500s, and the book was more likely dated to the 800s. Now, it is considered a national treasure of Ireland, and it includes four Gospels of the New Testament. It has 340 leaves or 680 pages, which means that those leaves or pages are covered front and back. Now many of the inks they can prove were imported from very far away lands, making it a very priceless treasure. What about these books is so fascinating? You know, I have spent a lot of time in my adult life studying things like this, and I really am fascinated by a lot of elements of this. There's the meditative nature of it, the precision, the dedication, and I definitely want to learn more about the idea of Celtic interlace. It's something that I find absolutely fascinating, and complicated and I love to just put my brain to it. So I definitely had that in mind when I picked out some of the things that I presented to you today. But I've also kind of wondered what it would look like to make a modern day illuminated manuscript or like a prayer book, which is much smaller, but is also illuminated. And like, how would that be different? And how would that change? And what elements would you keep? And what elements would you get rid of? And things like that. And... I really love all the patterns and I just personally want to learn more all about this process. Like I find, I think that I would find it very relaxing and almost um, meditative to do.
Anyway, that's all I have this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Bye-bye!